510714 expectation Clint Michigan USA thank you yeah I think it's all right thank you brother Baxter good evening friends we're happy to be here again this evening to give expressions of love and adoration for our heart to the worshipers of Jesus Christ and I trust that this will be a great evening if it was any more than last evening I don't know whether we can stand it or not of all my ministerial life I never seen any more of a quick falling of the Spirit of God than I did last evening I went completely numb just went out I looked down and coming over the building and that light just spread the whole entire building and I tried to say something I just couldn't say no more and the next I know there were some ushers talking to me somewhere ever which way the parking grounds are mr baxter after i come in i begin to get myself a little and he said brother branham this is the first time in my life that i ever was ever floored down like that and i just how wonderful that god was dealing with us i've never been able two or three nights i've been trying to do this and i packed it in my pocket i want to express my thanks for the kindness some presents some people sent me and i appreciate anything that anyone does when i first came in there's a bunch a bouquet of flowers two of them sitting on the table sent from d e n n e r s dinners as opposed of the city they're here tonight they may not be if they are i want to express my thanks to you for those beautiful flowers the dinners and then the next one was my boy gave me a letter which had a lab offering in it of five dollars that come from brother s a n d r e s k y he said i'd love to get my arms around you and hug you well brother that's a mutual feeling i would sure like the same thing and today when my little boy came in he had two big jars of honey and two boxes of these red raspberries i suppose they are well i guess you don't know how i appreciate it i sure love honey i love raspberries too mix them together and i really got them then haven't i one of the little cutest little things that i ever seen was one day on a fishing trip in the mountains i just love to fish and hunt and i was up in the mountains fishing i'd had my tent and it was early spring trout fishing just trying to get away from the crowds for a little while and i love pancakes and i guess i got a little f of fellow citizens on that and so you know i was i like to put honey on them and i have one theory i still stay with i'm baptist i don't sprinkle them i really pour it on them so i have it covered all over baptizing them and always take a large bucket of honey you know and one day coming around i heard a noise and there'd been an old mother bear and a two cubs had got in my tent they just tore it all to pieces and i didn't have my camera and the cutest little act as one of the little fellows ran away with the mother but the other fellow sat there it got the lead of that bucket of honey and he taken his power and push it on like that and then come up and just lick his hands well and he was um, he was honey from his feet to his head just so he looked around it was all in his eyes you know and he looked at me like that you know no condemnation to him he just stuck his hand back down in the bucket and got some more and i thought that was just like an old fashioned holy ghost meeting you don't care who's around you as long as you got your hand in the honey is that right yes sir licking it around so no condemnation to them that's licking you know it's all right but they was was sure having a grand time well i looked at the little fellow i loved to my sides hurt and i just walked away and i still was out of the bucket of honey letting him lick so i appreciate that very much and will do justice to that honey in the morning so thank you very much and now the services it's awfully warm in here and i just got to hear just a portion of your broadcast there is they come and got me and it sure sounds lovely the people playing and singing and those people on that this thing here you know i'm not very much of a musician but and on the organ and the trumpet or ever what it was are playing it was really pretty onward christian soldiers and all your voices blending in i have to shed a little tear too because it just uh, made my heart thrill to think that someday the saints of god will go marching up to glory 
and to see that a great time. Brother Baxter met me this afternoon and said, Brother Branham, you have to preach for tomorrow. Oh my, I said, Brother Baxter can't preach. And he said, after a man like that been uh, preaching, and he said, then he met me just a few minutes ago and said, the people I'd like for you to tell your life story tomorrow. So, oh, I can do that by God's grace. And I want to be here tomorrow afternoon around 2.30, I suppose, and I expect to see you all. Be just as quickly as I can bring the sinner and the unrepentant out tomorrow so that we can make an altar call and maybe God will give us many souls for his glory. Now, for just a portion of time, I want to sim read some of the word and then just pass a few comments and maybe give a testimony and try to get into the prayer line as quick as possible. And because they told me that coming down tonight, they come and got me, that the auditorium had been packed out since about five o'clock. And someone said they was going to be here at six in the morning to see if they could get a seat up front. So we are sorry we haven't got anywhere to take care of anymore. The fire laws just allow us to have so many in here. But while we are here together, I know you have had a glorious time. If we should say amen and go home, it would be wonderful. But now let's just, you and I, ask God and believe that God will answer our prayer and ask God to heal this rose of people through here tonight, everyone. When Brother Baxter came in and my boy was kind of talking to me, I could hear him in the distance last night. He kept getting closer. I knew I was coming to myself and he said, Daddy, are you all right? I said, yes. I never will forget the first time the boy ever seen the angel of the Lord at Bandali, Illinois. And I had a meeting and I made a challenge to the people. Just bring me anybody you want to and let me have enough time with them. They'll be healed. And they brought a blind boy, was born blind. And I stayed with that boy about an hour and 40 minutes. And he walked off the platform with his sight. And he came back and he picked up my tie, so speak. He said, Mother, is that what you, what color you call that? And the boy was born blind. And he was just so enthused and the people were screaming and going on. And when I went home that night, we was in the hotel. And I was being praying and almost asleep. And I woke up. And I knew he was in the room. I couldn't tell from where he was coming. But I waited a few minutes and I knew it was coming over this way, coming across towards the bed. I got out of the bed. My brother, a little boy, was next to me in the other bed. And I felt it coming. And I got out and I knelt down on the floor and started praying. He got real close. I never had no voice nor nothing. I waited a little bit. He got closer and I kept speaking. What would the Lord have me to know? And a voice began to speak in the room and told me not to do that. Not to do that. And just my commission was to pray for the sick and not to do that. And then when I opened my eyes, there he was, just above the bed, hurling around and around. And I said, do you mind if my brother and little son could see you? And he never made any answer back. It was done leaving me, the anointing. I seen it right off of me. And I kept my eye on him. And he never answered me. So I thought maybe he didn't care. I picked up a pillow and threw it on the bed and it woke up my brother. He said, what do you want? I said, wake up Billy. And he said, Billy, your dad wants you. And as soon as he looked back, he let out a scream. He saw it. He began screaming. And my little boy jumped over in the bed with me and began hugging me around the neck saying, daddy, daddy, don't let that get me. Don't let that get me. I said, why honey? That ain't what? That won't hurt you. I said, that's the angel of the Lord that leads the daddy. Bill is an orphan. His mother died when he was just about 18 months old. And he's a little orphan child. And I've been daddy and mommy both to him. And sometimes in going away, the little fellow used to stand at the airport and cry and go on. He said, daddy, don't leave me. He said, what have I got on earth but you? I said, the mother's gone and everything. And said, if something happens to you, what will happen to me? So that's not easy to leave your children like that. But Jesus said, whosoever will not forsake his everything and follow me, not worthy to be called my disciple. No matter what we do, we'll never be worthy to be that. But we like to do our part. So after that night, the little boy was consoled then when he got to see the angel of the Lord for the first time. He never worried no more when I left. Now, the reading of the scripture for the text tonight is found in the second chapter of St. Luke. You would like to refer to it and would read with me. I, 
You know, God's word can't fail, can it? And now I tell you, dear Christian friends, the anointing of the angel of God is so strong, I can hardly look out over this audience. Now, that's right. And I don't like for it to be like that right to the beginning. And I want to just talk just a little while on the scripture. Wasn't aiming to do it. Just give a testimony. And I'll try to talk just a moment. Listen to the reading beginning with the 25th verse. Behold, there's a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same man was just devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms, and blessed God, and said, Lord, now let thy servant depart in peace, according to the word, for mine eyes have seen the salvation. Let's bow our heads, Father. The hours are moving on. Help us, Almighty God, to know your will. There are many gathered tonight, and the building is hot. Oh, we believe the harvest is ripe. The fields are ready. Thrust in thy sickle tonight, Lord. Reap. May the wine be brought from the grip tonight, till each believer will become as it were drunk upon the Spirit of God, knowing nothing but the presence of God and his power, his redeeming blessings upon us to redeem us from our sickness, from our sins, grant his blessings, Lord. And as a servant has determined by thy grace, if possible, to speak a few words, help me, dear God, and may the Holy Spirit take the word of God and plant it right into the heart where it belongs, and may before the service is ended, may there be people all over the floor, everywhere, may the people be up off of the squats and stretchers, may the blind be laying their canes back, may the cripple lay down their canes and crutches and walk out, may those with heart trouble have it no more, with the cancers, Lord, we thank thee for your visit last night, and now, Lord, maybe a f new fresh group is in tonight, and I pray that you will heal them, everyone, and make it manifested to them by the power of the resurrected Christ. For we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, the beloved Son of God. Amen. Now quickly, you are invited attention. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing of the word. If we say for text, which it will not be, that I would say tonight expectations. You know, usually you get what you expect, don't you? What you think you're going if you come to the meeting just saying i believe i'll go down there's something wrong with that kind of a meeting i'm going down i'll see what's wrong with it you will the devil will sure uh, that you see that but if you come down to see what's good about it god will show you what's good about it see if you come down saying well if i don't believe i'll get healed i'll go down maybe see if i can get a prayer card but if I don't, well, they won't. No, that's just what you'll get. Just see. And just whatever you expect. Don't you believe that? When you come, expect this. Let's expect this tonight. Expect a great outpouring again. I believe God will repeat that again tonight. I don't know that he will. Twice I've asked him. I guess Brother Baxter told you the phenomenal of last night. Of how that I knew, never knew. Then the angel of the Lord met me in the room, and I asked him to do something outstanding. And a few nights ago, I asked him if he would do something outstanding for us that night, and he did. He healed a woman that was deaf for years, and taken a woman out of the wheelchair, and I forget what all he done. And now I'm asking again tonight to do something special for us. And last night I asked him, I trust that my Heavenly Father won't be angry with me, for asking the special blessings for written in the word, except you see signs of miracles you won't believe. And you don't want to be classed among such people as that. Why we are people who believe anyhow, see? We believe anyhow, and we want to accept it. Last night I was wondering how there could be anyone left in the building that wasn't healed. Now, it may not be visible. Angels of God and visions appear before people, and sometimes it's not for everybody. Is that right? Look at the majors. They're the only ones that see that star. It passed by every observatory, passed by all the stargazers and everything, passed right on by the spiritual people, passed right on over the temple, and no one saw it by the majors. It was for them to see it. They believe and they saw it. I do. The Bible said they did see. 
And if it be possible that the angel of God could be visible to some and not visible to the others, for instance, one day when I was baptizing, there was around 10,000 people, I guess, at the bank. And there was at least 7,000 of them that seen the angel of the Lord. And see, the other 3,000 never saw it. They said, well, I didn't see it. I heard you hollering and seen you raise your hand and everybody screaming, but I didn't see nothing, you see. And that's the way it was when the picture was taken. Hundreds and hundreds saw it and others didn't. Some of them in the Bible times, it was the same way it is today. God will reveal himself to those expecting him. The majors were expecting to see the star of Jacob rise. They were from the east and they'd listened to Balaam's prophecy, which said that there would be a star of Jacob rise and they were looking for it. They were expecting it and they were the ones who seen it. And how many in here tonight are expecting to be healed tonight? Let's see your hands well. You're not going to be disappointed then. If you can't be disappointed, if you're expecting it, if you're not expecting it, you say, well, I'll do it maybe tomorrow afternoon. I'll get you tomorrow afternoon. Well, that's when you'll get it. You say, well, I don't know. If you don't come to me personally, I don't believe I'll get it. Well, that's Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Is that right? A lady said not long ago, I went to a place to pray for a boy that had tuberculosis meningitis. He was dying. And the person said, over oh, the Branham said, my, said, you'll get meningitis. She said, I ran my children out. I gave them vaccinations. I said, such faith as that will give them meningitis. That's right. You must believe all things are possible to him that believes. Be expecting God to deliver you. For he promised it, and as soon as your faith can catch it, it's gone away. And that's right. Now, I was, whatever you expect, that's what God will do. I was thinking of Simeon. In his day, he was an old man. We'd call him maybe, in them days, an old sage. He's just tried to picture him with a long white beard, and he was a wonderful old saint of God. Now, the Bible said the Holy Ghost was upon him. Do you believe that? Yes. The Holy Ghost was on him. The, now, always God has had someone who believed his word. Somebody is going to expect God to fulfill his word, while others pass it by now. As it was in that day, so is it now. The church has gotten formal and got away from God, and they thought Jesus, their Christ, never would come, perhaps, maybe being many ages away. But just when they was expecting it to be that away, he was right at hand. Now, let's take this case now of Simeon. Now, he was a righteous old man. He believed that God was going to let him see the Christ before he saw death. Now, let's say he's 80 something years old. And then he had another witness there. There was another prophetess of the temple, John the Baptist and Joseph and Mary, and many of them a remnant. God has always had a remnant somewhere, and he's got a remnant tonight. Don't you believe that? Now, tonight, his remnant are composed of his body. His spiritual body here on earth baptized people into the body, making us the body of Christ. Now, that doesn't represent any certain church. It just represents all the baptized people of God into one body. By not one church, but by one spirit, are we all baptized to one body and become members of the body of Christ. Now, in them days, I can see Simon, the old man, walking along down the street and saying, Well, I'm going to see the Christ before I die. Could you imagine some of those scholars saying, Don't pay no attention to the old fellow. I believe he's just, he's got old now. And his mind kindly went away from him. And the poor old fellow, he's a good old man. But you know, an old man like that isn't going to. Why? We have looked for him for age. And look at the condition of the world today. Why? We know he isn't coming now. But Simeon had one reason. That he believed that the Holy Ghost revealed it to him. There's a thing God had told Simeon. That he wasn't going to see death until he seen the Christ. And he believed what the Holy Ghost said was the truth. Now, can you do that? Now, the same Holy Ghost that led Simeon is the same Holy Ghost that's here tonight. There is not no two Holy Spirits, are they? Just one Holy Spirit. Now, look at him. Now, he had to believe something more than you believe, see? 
people are getting healed every night, every day, and all over the world, big healing campaigns everywhere. They're getting healed, but Jesus of Christ had never come to the earth, but it was prophesied that he would come, and Simon had the promise of the Holy Spirit that he was going to see him. Now the Bible said, I believe David said, when the deep calls the deep now, if there's a deep a calling, there's a deep to respond to it somewhere. Do you believe that? In other words, like this. As I often said, before there's a fin on a fish's back, there had to be a water fast for him to use that fin. Or he wouldn't have the fin, is that right? If there's a tree to grow in the earth, there has to be an earth first for it to grow in. Or there would be no tree. And then, see, I love nature. To look at nature and see the sunsets and the mountains, there's something there that just calls out. Not long ago, I was sitting on the porch. And wife and I, we were swing swinging. The crowds had just got away, and some old sand cranes flew across, going on the river, and they were calling. And the lady came up, gave me a little card like that, that had that sunset and evening star, and one clear call for me. And I looked at those old cranes and I said, Look, God has fed them all day long out in the swamps. They're going down to the falls now to get their kindred and they'll be for the night. Two little robins, my favorite birds, flew up and went to the nest. They had fed their young all day long. God had provided for them. And at night time, he had a way provided for them to roost in safety. And I said, surely someday, when life is ended, and the sun of my life is setting, and your life, God has a way somewhere. There's something that just tells us there's something out there, the deep calling to the deep. I read in the paper here not long ago, while well, little baby eat the pedals of a bicycle, eat the rubbers off our pencils, the doctor said what it was. His little body needed sulfur and was eating that rubber because there was sulfur in the rubber. Now, before there could have been any crave for that sulfur, there had to be something in here craving it, creating that desire. And if there's something here creating that desire there's going to be something out there to respond to the creator creation in other words like this as i say this before you can have a desire there has to be a creator to create that desire is that right before there's a creation there has to be a creator and how many in here believes that there's divine healing let's see your hands all right now if thank you if you believe and there's something in you that says there's healing somewhere, divine healing, there's bound to be a creator to create that desire. And as sure as there's a desire in your heart to be healed by divine healing, there's a fountain open somewhere. That's all. You would, you couldn't have that desire unless there would be. And you remember, a long time ago when the church got formal and everything, the people began to crave more of God. The baptism of the Spirit came into existence, see? You are hungering and thirsting for more of God. And as long as you thirst for more of God, there's bound to be more of God somewhere to respond to that. If there's a deep calling, there's a deep to respond. See what I mean? Now, Simeon, he was the same way. He knew that there was a hunger in his heart. He knew that he had a promise by the Holy Ghost that he wasn't going to see death until they seen the Lord's Christ. Now, in them days, they didn't have press and radio as we have today. So Jesus, when he was born in Bethlehem of Judea, why there were shepherds come out and worshipped and sung, and the majors came and offered their presents and so forth, the news didn't scatter like it does now. But on the eighth day, according to Jewish law, the woman had to come and offer the turtle dove for her and her offering for a cleansing purification. Now, let's take a morning at the temple. Here's a man sitting there back in the playroom somewhere. It was a busy morning. Maybe it was Monday morning and everybody coming and going thousands upon thousands. Well, probably in the three or four million Jews there was in Jerusalem and around Palestine at that time, there'd be probably as many as 50 to 100 babies born every night, maybe more. Well, every morning there'd be a line of mothers line up here to offer the sacrifice and for the purifications and offer according to the law. And now look, I see Simeon back in the temple. My, I can just notice him sitting back there 
maybe reading the scriptures he had the promise now and then into a door stepped i'm so thankful my name's on her book tonight wrote by the blood of jesus christ across it pardoned oh my you'll think i'm a holy roll after this sure enough but brother when i think of the blood of christ that pondered my book of sin and throw it in the sea of forgetfulness it makes me get happy and rejoicing i love him with all my heart if the old time power of god that saved me and has kept me through the age i love him with all my heart tonight and i take my stand with paul of old in the way that's called heresy so worship i the god of our fathers i'm not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ for it is the power of God unto the salvation to those who believe. Marvelous. He's wonderful. And I see down there, when that time come for the purification of this little mother, although with her scar and things holding her arms, look at her, a baby wrapped in swaddling cloth. That's what they tell me. What goes on the back of a yoke of an ox that plows? And there wasn't nothing down there to wrap the little fellow in the king of glory what do you care how poor you are the king of glory wrapped in swaddling cloth rolled him up in that and here's the very prince of heaven laying in the arms of a little girl wrapped in swaddling cloth there stood the rich mothers they couldn't get along with a bunch of people they still have that feeling they don't get along that bunch and mary stood there and one of them walked away said look at her but in her heart she knew who she was she knew she had god's blessings and there she had it in her arms look there that's what the natural world would think look around and say oh my look at that that baby ain't even dressed well and look a peasant's offering two turtle doves here stood some of them with lambs they were rich people but a peasant's offering then while they were standing there and the little mother keeping it all in her heart i can see the holy ghost move out there in the room upon that old man called simeon that simeon i give you the promise and you have lived faithful to it get up and start moving now i can see him lay down the scroll walk out of the building he didn't know where he was going he was led by the Holy Ghost. I can see him moving around to the people, come down till he hit this line of women, start down along the line. He went right to where that little scorned woman was standing there, picked up that baby wrapped in certain cloth and tears dropping off of his beard, said, Lord, let the servant pass in peace. According to the word for my eyes, have seen the salvation. The Holy Ghost led him to the child. At the same time, an old blind prophetess sitting down there in a corner. The Holy Ghost spoke to her, and here she comes, winding through them people like that, blind, moved right up to where he was, and raised her hands and blessed God, led by the Holy Ghost, deep calling to the deep. They was expecting to see him. There he was, the Holy Ghost, leading them to it. For years, we have expected gifts to be in the church, we expected the power to be in the church. And isn't it strange tonight that you people believe in divine healing, that the Holy Ghost has led you here by the same channel, right to where God's blessings hangs over the building, ready to receive and heal anybody that's in divine presence that will believe it. The same God that lived in that day and the same Holy Ghost that led Simeon and Anne and them to the Christ has led you here tonight where we are gathered together in this place in the name of the Lord Jesus to see his power move upon his people. Amen. Amen. Now, that won't scare you. Amen. Means so be it. And that's right. It's the truth. How marvelous. Do you believe in being led by the Spirit? Recently, for just a testimony, we was having a meeting here in Fort Wayne. I'll never forget it. Many of you here was in Fort Wayne meeting. No doubt at all. Let's see your hands who was in the Fort Wayne meeting. What a marvelous time. That's where the man was healed with the multiple sclerosis. How many was there that night he was healed? Let's see your hands. There, that old man laying there crippled up. They both may be present now, laying like that. I didn't know. They was trying to lay the man on the platform in his white shirt there. He was a businessman. Had been paralyzed from waist down for 10 years in the bed. I didn't know. They, some of his friends, tried to get him up. The poor man was trying to touch my trouser leg. 
and they took him off the platform. I was just sitting down, I went ahead speaking. I happened to look out and I seen a vision of him. I knew he was going to be well. I see him walking through some kind of a place. I spoke to him and I said, you want me to come lay my hands on you, don't you? He said, yes, sir. I walked down. The same time there, an old, little old man was laying there so crippled that this man had wrote to, reached over and got a hold of my coat. He said, well, Branham, just lay your hands on me too while you are here and I'll get well. And no sooner than I touched that man there, he rose to his feet and that people who went into a scream, you remember it? Here a few weeks ago, I got a letter from both of them. And the man that was so paralyzed, was so crippled like this, was a plowing out in the field with a tractor. The other man, with multiple cirrhosis, came down the road and seen him. He jumped out of his car, and the man jumped off of the tractor, and they ran out in the field, grabbing one another, and lifting one another up and down like that. What is it? Nothing. By the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he is omnipresent in his power. Why? He's the same Christ yesterday, today, and forever. His powers cannot fail because he's God, God's divine order of the earth, the Holy Spirit. Today is just the same as he was. To reject Jehovah was a penalty. You had to reject Jesus was a penalty. And to reject this, what people call fanaticism and what people call foolishness is a Holy Ghost. He said to speak a word against it will never be forgiven in this world to come. It's more of a penalty to reject the Holy Spirit today than it would be to reject Jesus Christ or the Father. That's right. Don't you be ashamed. Stand for that which is right. I don't know what's the matter with me tonight. Um, now, all right, watch him. There in the meeting when things were going on, I remember I was staying in the Indiana Hotel and they have to keep the place a secret or where you stay, you know, because all the day long when you get them sick people that calls the anointing down and you can't hardly get to their flat home at night. And I remember a nurse, Mayo's nurse, one of the first healings, Miss Margie Morgan, cancer went through till she only weighed 47 pounds, Mr. Baxter, and then was talking to her the other night. She weighs 155. That's been about five years ago. The doctor said, oh, she'll die. She's just excited. Well, she's still excited. She's living. You better get excited then. So then it'll hold your life here a little while. Excitement. It's the power of the Almighty God. Not excitement if it is. It'll be good for psychologists and doctors to go to teaching excitement. Excitement don't cure you. You know it doesn't. Now notice, we were staying in the hotel and a little bellhop come up and he said, Reverend Branham, I'm sorry to inform you, but you couldn't even get out that door this morning said the auditorium is packed full. They know you're here. We waited a while and nowhere to go out to the breakfast. So after a while, another one come up I said, I'll tell you, I can take you through the basement if you don't mind. Your wife and them climb over the ash, some ashes. I said, I don't mind. We went down, went through a big pile of ashes and come out in an alley. We started down to the little place called the Turtle House. You remember where that's at? There's where Mr. Eaton was healed that morning with a stomach trouble when he ran up there to pay for my breakfast. And I remember I had my overcoat up like this, walking down the street, uh, holding my little girl, Mrs. Morgan on one side and my wife on the other. We were walking down the street. I started to cross the street to go to the Turtle House while we were eating our breakfast and our meals. And just then, I felt the Holy Spirit. You believe in being led by the Spirit? All right, listen closely then. It said, turn this way. And I started to turn. Mrs. Morgan said, where are you going? My wife looked quickly, said, Spirit leading now. Just watch, just follow him. And went down the street. I don't know where I went. But after a while, I stopped and looked up. It said the Miller's cafeteria. I went in. These people will be sitting here tonight for all I know. I went in. I got a cup of, I believe, of chocolate or something. Sat down to drink it. Mrs. Morgan, all of them. When we asked the blessing, I raised my head. I said something to my little girl. When I see the woman raise up, she said, God bless. Bless God. Bless God. I thought Mrs. Morgan turned around and said, you are trapped in here now. 
I said, Mrs. Morgan, don't say that, see? I said, this is the Holy Spirit. This woman come over, they are wringing her hands. She said, Brother Branham, I'm from Texas. She said, my brother is dying without trouble. I said, we followed. This is about eight or ten meetings that we've been into. And you have never been able to get a prayer card that was called to the line and said, to get up here this time, we sold our cow, said, because my the doctor said my brother could only live a little while longer. They had something had injured the diagram and uh, said he's just got a few more weeks to live. And it was our last chance, said we, till last night, we can't even get in to get to the place anymore. And I said, I prayed all night long. And she said, this morning, just about four o'clock in the morning, she said, I had a dream. And in this dream, it was told me to come down and find a place by the name of Miller's Cafeteria and to be here at nine o'clock. And my brother's been healed. I looked at my watch and exactly nine o'clock, you know what place? Yes, sir. And that boy was healed. I turned, I got my hat and started out the door and people began screaming. That cafeteria was alive in a few minutes. I started to walk out the door said something a blessing to them i started to walk out the door and the little woman she was at san bernardino a few weeks ago to testify to me was coming back from brazil to see her daughter which is a missionary and she fell down on the street and grabbed a hold of my legs like that she said oh god i picked her up and i said what's the matter sister me and my wife and them they started packing her up said what's the matter and she was way big malignant and my brother had turned her down. Her husband owns a spaghetti company here in Chicago. And she was a little woman. And she was all oh, so swollen out. She said, Brother Burnham, she said, it's my last chance. She said, oh, I've just prayed and cried. Said, Mayos has turned me down. And there's nothing could be done about this here. I've taken radium. I've taken x-ray treatments and everything. And nothing could be done. And she said, this morning, just along about the break of day, she said, I was awakened. I was looking out and I went back to sleep again. Said I dreamed a dream that I was to stand in front of Miller's cafeteria 10 minutes after nine to be healed. Oh my, do you believe in leading by the spirit? Yes, sir. On down the street I went, just a little while longer. Any people from Fort Wayne and across the line know of this. I was going down the street. My wife said, what? Are you ready to go in now? I said, I don't know. We got down there and I seen some fishing tackle. I decided to turn for that. Just then the Holy Spirit moved down again and began to move over. This is my inside life I'm telling you about. It happened right here in the city too today. And then here it moving out. I felt it. I said, oh, it's again. I said, now, honey, you go on over and get the at the drugstore over there and get the little coloring book for the baby. Had to keep her in a room all day. I said, you all go on back in. I don't know when I'm going to be able to. The Holy Spirit will relieve me now. I went on down at the, started down at the end of the street and I walked up there and begin to look towards that tackle and stuff. And I got back to the other side. I said, Heavenly Father, where would you have your servant go? I thought maybe he wants me to stand here a little bit. And I stood a little bit, nothing happened. I thought, well, I started to walk towards the corner. He said, go across the other corner. And the cop blowed the whistle there. And I went across the other side and stood there a little bit about 10 minutes i didn't know why i was standing there people passed and i was standing there that's all i knew when you're led of the spirit of god god wants you to just do what he says do he's the one on the other end of the line doing the work i just stood there a little bit and i thought oh what is going to happen and a big irish cop out there blew the whistle again the pedestrians crossed and coming behind was a little woman with a checkered dress on a checkered term looked like a canadian she was packing a pocketbook on her arm she had her head down 
she went walking along like this and she and the Holy Spirit said stand over here and she passed that close to me just went right on by I thought why is that she went a little further I thought well that's strange and he told me to stand here by her wonder why maybe she just caught the blessing as went by like that in a few moments she turned around and said oh she said brother Burnham and she come back she said um I don't I'm beside myself I said I don't think so sister what's the matter she said I'm from Canada I'm only allowed hundred and fifty dollars a year to come over here she said I have spent all my money and she said I was in the hotel lobby and I had five cents for coffee this morning she said and I was on my road back to hitchhike back to Canada said I couldn't get in the lines and I was praying and said something just turned me around and made me come up two or three blocks and walk across this way oh my there he is I see her holding her hand I said it's your arm sister she said yes I fell on a rock I was riding a dog when I was a little girl and I fell on a rock and had this arm like this and while she was talking here come her arm coming out like that she began screaming at the top of her voice and that big cop said I know who you are brother Branham you talk about a prayer line we had it all up and down the street there for a while and people standing moving oh how marvelous you know long ago I was coming from Dallas Texas in the spring and I thought I was flying back and I was grounded at Memphis right where my had to be one night on the 5th at Memphis Tennessee I was grounded there and they put me up there in that I believe the Peabody Hotel it's called it's a very nice place myself I couldn't afford to go in it but the airlines sent me up there and I remember that morning they called me said now the plane we leave at 8 o'clock Reverend Branham said they'll be by to pick you up I said yes sir and I got my letters ready and I was going down to mail the letters now listen closely I'm going to close in a minute and I thought oh my I'll go down and mail these letters and I got out and I started down the street put trying to put the post office I was walking down the street singing that little Pentecostal song let's see telling now both far and anyway, his power is just the same I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them brother Ryan you remember when you used to sing it and saying we and going singing that little song and after a while I felt something going through got close I stepped back up bend a great big column there and I said Heavenly Father what would you have your servant to do it kept going few I was real still a minute and I heard a deep voice say turn go back well I turned and went back down the street I walked and I walked on past the hotel on down through Memphis just walking on and on the Sun was way up high then the Sun was up and it was a beautiful spring morning the fragrance of the flowers in the air had perfumed the air I thought how beautiful was going walking along there I thought Lord I don't know you said walk here I am I'm walking I just kept on walking 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 walked out pretty near the other side of Memphis and I remember going down a little hill towards where a little creek over some thing ran through this way a little tributary there at the river of some kind I just kept went walking down through there there's a little old white shed hut down there a little old colored people live down in that way I was walking down through there singing humming to myself only believe only believe Satan said you're going to miss your plane I said I'll walk all things are possible don't let him tell you a lie he's a liar when God is a leading you go do what God said do yes sir he tells you you are healed believe it and just start walking on and I kept on like that singing only believe I was noticing leaning across a gate like this there's a typical old Aunt Jemima a great big heavy set colored woman with a man's shirt tied around her head she was leaning out across there I kind of quit singing humming when I was far as that wall from her I just went walking on by and when I got there 
She kind of looked at me and laughed. And those big white teeth showed. And a tears streaked face like that. She said, good morning, person. I turned. Now, person means minister or reverend down in the south. Said, good morning, person. I looked around. I said, good morning, auntie. I said, how do you know as a person? She smiled and wiped her eyes. I thought, here it is. Something's going on. I could feel the spirit. I'd walked far enough by then. My, when I think about it, my heart leaps. I turn around. I said, how do you know I was a person? She said, person, did you ever read in the Bible about that you know my woman that had that baby by the promise? I said, yes, auntie, I've read that many a time. I preached on it not long ago. She said, I is that kind of a woman too. And I told the Lord, if he give me a child, I'd raise it for him. Said the person, the Lord give me a boy. And I read him till he was in his teens. Said, he took a road that's wrong. Got out with some bad company. Said, he's laying here dying now. He caught a bad disease and the doctors can't do nothing for him. Said, they give him all kinds of shots. But said he's a backslider and said he's laying in here dying. Said he'd been unconscious since the day before yesterday and said he don't know nothing. He thinks he's out in a big deep sea somewhere cold. And said, person, it just breaks my heart to see my boy die like that. And said, I want him saved. And I said, I prayed all night. And I said, Lord, you give me that baby. But where is Elijah? He said, now, Lord, Will you help me? Don't let my baby die like this. And said, and the Lord told me this morning, and said, I kind of fell asleep there in my chair. And I dreamed that I was to come out here and stand in this gate. And I'd see a man coming dressed like you is. Oh my, you know how that makes you feel? I said, Auntie, my name is Branham. Did you ever hear of me before? She said, No, sir, I never heard of you. Oh my, I said, Auntie, I pray for the sick. She said, Do you? I said, can I come in and see your boy? She said, sure, person. And when she raised that little old gate back with a chain on it and a plow point for weight and a weight behind it, I went into king palaces and I went into big fine homes. But I never was more welcome than I was when I walked in that little gate that morning under that trust room. She walked just as happy. She knew something had to happen. God was on both ends of the line. So I walked into the room. First thing upon there was a little old song, a sign, God bless our home. Little old chunk stove that we call it in the south setting there and a little poster bed. Here was a great big stout looking boy, about 180 pounds around 17 18 years old laying there with a blanket in his hand going um um like that he said it's so cold mama um she patted him she said mama's boy i thought right then of motherly love no matter what is done how much disgrace it was his mother's still baby she kissed him on his forehead and i thought if the love of a mother can go like that what will the love of god do when he said, a mother may forget a suckling babe, but I'll never forget you. I think amazing grace has sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Then while she was over her boy there, I said, Auntie, let's pray. She never said nothing about this, his healing. She wanted him to be saved. And so before he went, she wanted to have a witness that he was saved. And that old saint got down on the floor, their floor, I couldn't pray. He had prayed, oh my. She opened up that heart and the tears rolling down her cheeks. She said, Lord, if you'll just let him tell me that him going to be with Jesus, said, I'll be happy and like that. And I just knelt there and held my head down and I cried like a baby. In a few moments, she raised up. She said, thank the Lord. And she went over. She said, mommy's baby, parted it like that. And I felt his feet just as cold as he could be. Death was on the boy. And he said, I said, does he? He said, he don't know. I said, I spoke to the boy. I said, how are you feeling now, young man? He just kept going home. She said, he don't know where is that person. He ain't been conscious for two days now. And I said, let's pray again, sister. 
I knelt on the floor and I said, Heavenly Father, somehow or another last night, a storm came up and you grounded the plane. Don't you believe all things are together for the good? I said, on my road home to the meeting, I said, you grounded the plane. And this morning when the sun was shining, I know the hours is past, but the time now for it to live. But somehow you led me down this way. I don't understand, but I'm putting my hands on this boy in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, and asking him for his life to be spared. And then no more. The prayer had been made. I had him going, um, said, oh, mama, she raised up. Said, what do mama baby want? Said, mama is getting light in the room. Getting light in the room. She began crying. I raised up my hands, began to offer praise. Up, went to the bed. Come, that big, healthy boy, restored to his normal condition. A few months after that, I was passing through on a train and I stopped in to get something to eat. I had somebody haul a person around him. He was pulling one of his little old cats around like that down there at the station working. He ran, grabbed a hold of my hand, said, you remember me? And I said, no, I don't. He said, I was a boy. You come to that morning that the Lord led you down there where mommy was praying. Says Pastor Branham, I is perfectly whole now and I is a Christian now. Christian? Oh, brother. And you know what? That plane never left. Something happened to it. It was about an hour late and I got on the plane and I got home in time anyhow. Let me tell you something, Jesus Christ, the same message to end forever. His power is omnipotent. He can't fail. He's the same God that was in Memphis, Tennessee that night, Fort Wayne, Indiana. is here tonight. Do you believe that? He's the same. He can't fail. Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee tonight for their power. How we could testify hour after hour of your blessings and what all that you've done for us. I'm thinking of that time down in Memphis and thinking of over here in Fort Wayne in the different places throughout the nation. Oh God, now you're here. It may be peculiar to some people, but Lord, it's not to we who believe you to be the same message to end forever. We believe that you're here tonight and you're here in your power. And as soon as old was expecting the promise of the Holy Spirit to let him see the Christ before he died, oh God, the same Holy Spirit is here. And we're asking him tonight in the name of the Master Jesus Christ, Son of God, to let us see his great power, not as we need to see it. And I pray that you'll do it, Lord, to strengthen the faith of others, that these next three meetings that's to be in this auditorium may be the setting forth of an old-fashioned revival that will cause churches to be filled with your glory. And Lord, these ministers, the servants, sitting just behind me to write in prayer, O oh God, may each one of them be filled with the power, and may the churches be multiplied, and double times double, Lord, of people getting saved, and may there be an old-fashioned healing powers flowing through the churches, and great signs and wonders, and may something happen that will cause the city to talk for a long time. Granted, dear God, now speaking tonight in this warm building, I pray that you'll hide your servant behind the cross. And may the angel of God come near, move like you did last night. O oh, angel of God, come down upon this building. And I believe if you'll give us another chance after last night, showing your power, if you'll give us that chance tonight, I believe, Heavenly Father, if you'll send him to manifest himself again and that the sick and everyone in here will receive him in one heart, in one accord. And there will be healings, Lord, that will be talked about for months and years to come. Grant it, Lord, that these kind of blessings and favors you ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, sir. Here, I know it's very hard. Worry about hot like this. We can't help that. I wish now, in this lovely song, Abide With Me, in the hour of my death, when life is taking me away, or my the angel of God, I hope, are packing me to glory. I believe that's already settled. When they take me away, I hope I hear that song being played like that, abide with me. When the death is struggling in my throat and the cold vapors floating against my soul, when I start down through that long valley, they'll call the shadow of death. I want to see the morning star come out. 
right up the way for the valley of the shadow of death and when i get to the jordan i expect to see two glossy wings of the holy ghost reach across there and bear our very souls to better land till that time may we live faithful to him who is faithful to his word in the name of the lord jesus all have faith in god all believe in god and no one doubt god but only believe all right i don't know what to do i'm asking my minister brothers just stay here where you are at i want you to help me tonight will you do it this man ordained of god they publicly come out here before the city like this to show themselves that they believe in divine healing in jesus christ and they are just as much ordained to pray for the sick as anybody else there is in the world to pray for the sick your pastor has the same right to pray even the lay members have a right to pray is that right confess your faults one to another and pray one for the other everyone has a right that believes in divine healing to pray for the sick the only thing is just your faith to mount up i don't know what the holy spirit i've asked him to bless us i believe he will do it are you going to believe with me now you're going to expect him to do it then everyone be reverent and let's call a little prayer line and get started we'll call a few up and somewhere in the line and then we'll and i want some of the other people we just don't know what the lord's going to do for us tonight i tell you coming over here tonight i just said lord i commit it to you and when i get here all these pastors was up on the platform by the baxter said by the branham there's not a way in the world for them men to stand anywhere said every person can be stood in this is stood and they've turned away since early in the afternoon or the evening and said there's nowhere and just when the holy spirit revealed something to me i said leave them brothers right where they are it's not as i don't want my brothers here but here they're believers you are believers and some of them are needing healing too and that's right and when it's coming crossways this way it mixes me up you see what i mean it's mixture me up mixing me up and when i turn sideways if i turn the patient this way there's no neat way of turning the patient to get out did you ever turn a radio on about three or four stations trying to come in at the same time that's the same thing when i feel the moving those are demon powers not demon of your soul demon of your body but the box explained all that to you and when they come just that i just the fear and if you notice when he'll be healed of something and then a kindred spirit of sympathy out there will be scared and take out of the person have you seen that take place sure they know when they are whipped you can't fool them some the other night i was at a place where they said that a divine healing meeting and someone was standing here stomping and kicking on the platform hard and saying devil count of it devil now he don't care how much you can cut up see that ain't going to bother him you can't scare him there's only one thing will move him that's a true divine faith in christ that will make him it'll take him right now he's afraid of that that's right when you really got the blood of christ behind you and backing your faith up moving up like that he will move away he recognizes it all right now everyone be reverent where's billy all right did you give what prayer cards did you give z how far 51 to 100 let's take just about 10 let's take 90 to 100 get 90 to 100 in z 90 to 100 line up here according to your cards right away now how many in here hasn't got prayer cards let's see your hands oh that's good the front line here that's the way i'm glad you're here now you said this way how many down in the audience down here have you got prayer cards very few just now and then all right now somebody look at the prayer cards and see if they've got that hundred what is it what did i call by the baxter oh 90 to 100 yeah 90 to 100 see if somebody's deaf they wouldn't be able to hear and look at the the one next to you and see if they've got their cards aligned right i'm just a little late but i'm trying i'm going to try just 
you pray for me because I'm pray for me brethren it's hard keeps me coming right back out in the yes sir all right excuse me audience for speaking to me like this I've took up a lot of your time but I just love you so much I had to have a few words to sit you before leaving on the gospel it's kind of hard when you're speaking like that and then go right back into the anointing of this other it's a different feeling and everything it isn't like speaking or something but i pray that god will bless each one of you now and give you how many is going to believe with all of your heart now and that's right how many of you just keep your hand up and sing it like this brother branham i'm holding on to god to answer your prayer tonight are you doing that all right you do that that's solid almost i'd say 100 percent something's got to happen brother sister i've said this and i'm going to say this before the anointing comes down on me deep don't pay no attention the way i'm acting up here because that's uh, just that uh, you're not in this world at this time i know where much but i don't know what i'm saying or doing most of the time listen the angel of god told me if you get the people to believe you and then be sincere when you pray there's nothing will stand before your prayer and i said sir they won't believe me i'm uneducated he said you'll be given two signs and he told me what the signs is you understand he said when this is done they'll believe then and then after those signs is done which is infallible is it the truth it is the truth all right then you have accepted it now upon that basis anything can happen hear me anything can happen don't you pay any attention to any senses don't you pay any attention to any doubts or any mechanical things you listen to the holy spirit tonight and if you'll do that and do just as i tell you to do you'll see the glory of god now i'm saying to you down here too and i'm saying to every one of you believe and be in prayer and accept jesus christ as your healer and say to god that you are that you believe that you're going to be healed god's going to make you well tonight and you shall receive what you've asked for all right everything ready all right bring the man how do you do sir i just try to get that around so that the people that out in the audience will be able to hear you'll check that for me times brother baxter now my brethren i want you all back here with one accord to believe now you don't have to keep your head down unless i ask but i want you to believe me i'm here trying representing the same gospel that you preached all these years and you brethren some of you here is age to me and you back when i was a little boy you were preaching this gospel and i'm contending for it and now i'm just merely running the road that you have paved that's all if there's any credit if jesus would come tonight i'd be happy to step back and let you all go in for i believe you would do it before me because i'm just running over the road that you have all have paved now you pray for me and as the people are here i'm trying to this is my first time i've ever done this about first or second time as a member of trying to have the spirit of discernment well this coming you understand me you brethren is from both sides you see like that all right now believe with all of your heart here all right all right you come brother all right yes sir that's all right just so i can talk to you just for a little bit and as now i suppose we are as far as i know we're strangers in life i don't oh he was at the 420 meetings yes but he didn't get in the room i'm just going to talk to you just a little bit because that's just to contact you see your spirit now that was wonderful meeting wasn't it it was marvelous that's where the only time that i know of that the i believe the paper called with the people that famous book it that meeting went it the night that a little blind girl was healed on the platform the assemblies of god people it was in your paper, uh, paper and so forth when a little blind girl came up and then the paper wrote around there that she could not see and she had been prayed for and her father went down to the place and brought the child and proved it and everything when i took the bl a little girl aside and the blind spirit 
was cast away from her. Was anybody there that night when it happened? Yeah, there's hands now. There's somebody waving back in there. That's right, everyone. It was a marvelous time. A little girl was had uh, stomach trouble and lots wrong with her. And it appeared how many Assembly of God people that uh, takes that. What is the paper's name now? Evangel. How many read? 